Praise the Lord. Shall we stand? Amen. Just open by reading um, Psalm 27. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Uh, and to inquire in his temple. Uh, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. It says, and now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his, pres in, in, offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, of mercy also upon me and answer me. When I said, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of God mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. The Lord had a blessing to the reading of his word. Shall we just bow in a word of prayer as we um, just invite the Lord's presence, amen, into this place today. Father, we're grateful for the privilege and the opportunity we have to gather in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your divine protection. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for watching over. We thank you, God, for giving us a heart and a mind to want to come into the house of the Lord today. Father, I pray, oh God, that you would just, Father, just move in a very special way. God, you know the needs, you know the desires, you know, God, exactly what we stand uh, uh, here present, Father, a uh, desiring. We just pray that you meet, Lord, the desire of every heart. Speak from heaven, amen, uh, this afternoon as you spoke this morning. And Lord Jesus, we're just careful to give you all the glory. We're careful to give you all the honor. And we're careful to give you all the praise. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 He's worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We invite him into this place. Amen. We worship him and adore him because he's the only one worthy to be praised. Amen. Let's sing a chorus of this song. Come in the house. Jesus, you are welcome. Come in the house. Come in the house. Oh, come in the house. Come in the house. Come in the house. Oh, Jesus, you are welcome. Oh, come in the house. Come in the house. Hey, hey, come in the house. Oh, Jesus, you are welcome. Jesus, you are welcome. Oh, come on. 
Let your glory fill the house. Glory fill the house. Let your glory fill. Jesus, you are welcome. Jesus, you are well. Oh, let your glory fill. Oh, let your glory fill the house. Let your glory fill. Hey, let your glory fill. Oh, Jesus, you are welcome. Hallelujah. Oh, let your glory fill. Come on. Let your peace fill. Let your peace fill the house. Come on, Jesus. Let your peace fill. Oh, Jesus, you are welcome. Hey, let your peace fill. Let your love, let your love fill the house. God, let your love. Oh, Jesus, you are welcome. Yeah, let your love fill. Come on. Say, come in the house. Say, come in the house, Lord. Oh, Jesus, you are welcome. Hey, come in. Hallelujah. Come on. Say, come in the house, Lord. Oh, come in the house, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, you are. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hey, I say, come in the house, Lord. We invite you into this place. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Come on, somebody. I say, come in the house, Lord. Oh, come in. Yeah. Jesus, you are welcome. Glory to God. Oh, come in the house. Come on, one more time. Hey, come in the house. Say, hey, come in the house, Lord. We invite you. Jesus, you are welcome. I said, Jesus, you are welcome. Hey, hey. I said, Jesus, you are welcome. Oh, oh. Jesus, you are welcome. Yeah, I said, Jesus, you are welcome. Oh, Jesus, you are welcome. Jesus, you are well. Hallelujah. Come in the house. Come in the house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, you're welcome in this place. You are welcome in this place, oh God. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Amen. Let's sing a chorus of that. Come on and bless. Y'all got to put your hands together. Come on. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Hey. Oh, bless the Lord with me. Everybody. Bless the Lord with me. Come on and hallelujah, 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 hey, oh, hallelujah, hey, come on, come on and clap your hands with me. Hey, come on and clap. Oh, everybody, clap. Hold your hands. Hey, hey, come on and clap. Hold your hands. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Oh, say hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, come on and praise the Lord with me. Everybody praise. Oh, come on and praise the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Say praise the Lord. Say hallelujah. 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 Oh, oh. the Lord with me everybody praise the Lord oh say praise the Lord yeah everybody hey come on I said hallelujah hallelujah hey Oh, hallelujah. Hey, oh, I said hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, come on, lift it up. I said hallelujah. Oh, is the highest praise. Come on. I said hallelujah. When I'm in the valley. Hey, hey. And when I'm on the mountain top. Huh? Yeah. I said hallelujah. Oh, you deserve my praise. Say Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise in this place. Worship him. Adore him. Glorify his name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing one more song. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands. Amen. And we worship because he deserves our praise. We were created to worship him. We were created to bless him. And I want to tell you something. You know, angels were also created to worship. They would say, holy, holy, holy in his presence. And Amen. But you know, our worship is different from the angels' worship. It's because we've got experience with God. We know him as Savior. We know him as Redeemer. We know him as Healer. We know our God. That's why he deserves the glory. Deserves the honor. He deserves the praise. Can we lift our hands in his presence? Let's just sing this song with all of our heart. From our hearts to his. You deserve the glory, oh, you deserve the glory and the honor, hallelujah. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name, hallelujah. You deserve the glory. Every hand lifted, every eye closed, and the honor, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we lift as we bless your holy name, as we bless your hope, hallelujah. Oh, you are great. Yes. You the miracles, oh, great. And there is no one else like you. Yes. 
There is no one like you. Yeah, you are great. Oh, if you do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Come on, sing it one more time. You deserve the glory. Thank you, Jesus, and the honor. Lord, I lift my hands in worship. Hallelujah. As I bless your holy name, for you deserve the glory and the honor. Oh, Lord, I lift my hands in worship. Yes. As I bless your holy name, because you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, oh, there is no one like you, you are great. And you to me recall so great, there is no one else like you. Hallelujah. Ah, there is no one like you. God, you are, you are great. You to me recall so great. Oh, and there is no one else like you. Hallelujah. Yeah, there is no. Yeah, you are. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody like you. Hey, you do miracles so great. Nobody, 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 nobody like you. Hallelujah. Hey, you are, you are great. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, so great. No one else like you. Oh, there is no one else like you. There is no one there is no one else like you. There is nobody. There is no one else like you. Somebody worship him. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Bless your holy name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. God is good. Amen. So good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. On today. Um, thank God for keeping us through another week. Uh, we still got a mind to serve God uh, in the midst of a pandemic we find ourselves getting closer to our Lord and uh, we're, we're grateful and then very grateful for his his provision we're grateful for his protection uh, we're grateful amen that he just keep on making ways out of no ways 
Amen. My brother-in-law used to sing a song. He said, you keep on proving yourself to me, <laughs> making ways out of no ways. And uh, that's the God that we serve. Amen. Uh, we uh, just have a, a, a praise report here that we want to acknowledge. Amen. Uh, Sister Sarah says, I'm, I'm thanking God for my new job. Amen. Amen. She said, I, I made a specific request about a new job, and God met the specifics. He's an on time God. So, amen. He's proven himself. When you pray, he hears. Amen. We heard that a little earlier. The, 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 the scriptures say, I have, I have seen. I have heard, and I know. God already seen, he's heard, and he knows. And all we got to do is just wait for him to do what he does best. Amen. God is, God is all right. Amen. We thank God to have um, uh, Sister Blanca and Sister Tabitha Bavosa with us. Amen. On today, God bless you. Amen. They are a guest of Sister Burrs. Amen. And uh, so good to have them. Amen. In fellowship with us on today. Uh, I, um, um, as you all that were uh, online earlier, you noticed that we we have a guest speaker with us today. Amen. Brother Gene Gabold has come down from uh, Orlando, amen, to just uh, be in fellowship with us. And we're so happy, amen, to have him. We, we really enjoyed uh, the service this morning. And if you didn't get a chance to listen to it, I advise you to go back and and here, amen, the service is, he was just, he got to that scripture where it's talking about the Hittites and the uh, Jebusites and the Perizzites and all. I said, well, what a connection to what Brother Troll was talking about on last week as he began to define what they, what they were that were on the mountain, you know, the spirits that was behind them. I said, what a connection. God, God know how to, God know how to uh, uh, confirm things, right? And, uh, you know, just, just a real wonderful sermon there, and I just, I know that you'll be blessed, amen, by it. Uh, I want to, um, uh, before I give the announcements, did anybody have a song that they wanted to share today, amen? Did anybody have? If not, I will sing. But anybody got one? Okay, just want to make sure. All right. All right. Uh, let's just make a, a few announcements here. First, we want to uh, extend some happy birthdays. We got uh, a number of birthdays coming up this week. Brother Caleb, amen, Wesco will be celebrating a birthday on tomorrow. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. Amen for that. Uh, thank God for giving him another year. Brother Joseph, amen, uh, Morales, he's going to be celebrating a birthday also on tomorrow. And we thank God for giving him another year. Amen. Our precious sister Michelle will be celebrating a birthday on Tuesday. We thank God for giving her another year. Praise the Lord. And then on Thursday, the Lord has ordained it to be my birthday. So, amen. I'll be celebrating another year as well. So we, we thank God, amen, for all things. Um, as um, I was just uh, mentioning Amen. We want to continue to do the services the way that we have been doing them. Uh, I had been just praying about some changes that I wanted to make and uh, just waiting on the Lord. And, and I felt this morning the Lord just gave me a peace in my spirit. Just keep doing things the way that we are doing it. And um, um, uh, I believe, uh, I know that uh, we have had uh, a lot of things happen. And I want to I encourage this. If, if you're sick, it's, it's okay to stay home if you're sick. Please call for prayer. Amen. We want to pray for you if you are sick. Uh, if you are around somebody that's sick, amen, it's okay to stay home and stream the service, you know, because we don't want to open uh, things up here, right? So thus far, God has been keeping us. We haven't had any anything, you know, come amongst us, and we're grateful for that. Uh, we've had around us, but not in us. And, uh, and we thank God for that. So, so we're asking that everyone just continue to do what you're doing, but please use every precaution. And if you are sick, please let us know because we want to keep you in prayer. 
uh, we have been seeing the mighty hand of God touching people. I mean, I'm talking about after prayer. I'm talking about after they were diagnosed with, with being positive. We have prayed at a distance. We sent the words, and we see results, right? So we know God answers prayer. We know God answers prayer, and with, with every, I mean, sometimes we give the devil just too much credit. We want to stop and give God some credit. God is moving in the midst of all of this, right? God is touching people. God is healing people in the midst of all of this. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I, I heard this week about a particular sister that, you know, uh, that had contracted the virus, and she's kind of taking care of herself, uh, you know, and, and being a nurse and everything. And I think she probably knows some things that maybe others don't know. But she, uh, she, she, she's taking care of herself. And, but I, that lady, uh, when I heard about uh, the case, I remembered some of the things that that sister did for this church, even though she don't come here. I remember the things that she did, and, and I say that the best thing that I could do right now is, Lord, stand in the gap for her because, you know, it's some things that she did at a certain season. The reason that we are even in here is some of the things that she did. God remember things like that. So if we have an opportunity to stand in the gap, God remember what she did. Remember the seed that she planted, God. We rebuke this thing in the name of Jesus, right? Hallelujah, right? So we, you know, you, you, can, you can stand and pray and, you know, and just kind of feel what they're feeling and, and expect to see results. Hallelujah, we expect that. So, so I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm just thanking God for, for all things. Uh, uh, we, so we'll continue to do what we have been doing, amen. Uh, now, we won't, have, um, um, uh, we won't have Friday night service, but I, I, I am, uh, there is something that I want to do. And I will get word out. I don't want to necessarily announce it, but I, I will get word out. Uh, something that's specifically for our youth that I want to do. So uh, I will let you all know about that coming up in the month of August. And uh, I know that everybody got plans, and, you know, I understand that. But if uh, we'll work with what we got. But I, something that the Lord just put in my heart this morning. Amen. And, and we're going to do it. We're going to do it by God's grace. Uh, I want to thank the Lord for all the equipment that he provided us during this time. You all saw the, the new microphone system that was used last week, and um, also uh, the new projector was installed, amen, uh, this week, and, and you can see our cameras and everything are placed uh, appropriately, so uh, God met the needs that we had, and I'm so grateful uh, for uh, the Lord doing that, and I thank you all for your contributions to, to help us get to where we are, I, I feel I mean, I, I, I was watching the service, amen, online and uh, from last week, and, and as I was just looking to see some of the things that we've done, I say, Lord, we've come a, a long way, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for those. So those that are watching online, I hope you have seen improvements in our, amen, what we've been trying to present to you, and I know we've had some little technical issues with sound. We're working through all those things. We put a lot of new things in place, so y'all just bear with us. We will get it all going and uh, and I and I believe that once it's all going on fine tune and running just perfectly you will enjoy the experience every time service start you just click on it and it'll be working that's the, that's that's what we're trying to uh, ar arrange for you so thank you for your patience amen in this uh, we do have the ability to give amen uh, you have multiple ways that you can give one uh, is those that are inside the sanctuary we have a wooden box amen on the table you just put your offering in there as you're leaving today if you desire to give uh, those that would like to give online, you have two ways that you can do that, either through PayPal or through Cash App. Amen. If you, uh, the Cash App uh, uh, symbol, amen, Spirit and Truth T, as you can see in the middle of the screen, that is our Cash App. Uh, you can send your offering or tithing right to the church, as well as if you want to use PayPal, make sure you choose the option uh, in PayPal, give to a friend or family member, and then use the email address of giving at john423.org. Uh, if you're not comfortable with those things and you'd like to just put something in the mail, feel free to do that. Our address is there at the bottom of the screen, Spirit and Truth Tabernacle, uh, 3951 Haverhill Road, Suite 109, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33417. I sound like I'm on the radio. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> but we thank God for all things. <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. We, uh, we just appreciate the Lord Jesus. Uh, let's pray, amen, over our giving. 
God, we thank you. Father, we thank you for the ability that we have to be able to give. We ask, oh God, that you would use this for the furtherance of your kingdom. We have seen you just open doors and make ways out of no way. You've blessed. Uh, you've blessed us, Lord, and, and we look at the, all the technology that you've given us, just a small group of saints, but God, you continue to show that you are watching over this city, and Lord, we're grateful for that. As your saints give, we pray that you give back to them 100-fold. Bless their businesses, bless them on their jobs, give them new jobs. God, uh, open up doors that they cannot even see. Lord, just uh, move in ways that go beyond their expectations. Lord, we're careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. God has smiled on me. Mm -hmm. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. Hallelujah. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Hallelujah. I once was lost, but thank God I'm found. I was blind. Thank you, Lord. Now I can see. That's why I sing the song. I say, God has, yes, he has smiled on me. Thank you, Jesus. He has set me free. Oh, I'm so glad God has, yes, he has smiled on me. Oh, and he's been good, oh, to me. Hallelujah. Oh, you see, I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary, I was wounded, and I was sad. Hallelujah. But I found in him. Yes, I did. A sweet resting place. Oh, and he has. Jesus has made me glad. That's why I say God has. Yes, he has smiled on me. Oh, he, he has set me free. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank you, Lord. Yes, I do. God has, hallelujah, he smiled on me. Oh, and he's been good, yeah, to me. I like to say that second verse again. Oh, you see, I came to Jesus. Oh, just as it was. I was weary, I was wounded, and I was sad. Oh, but I found in him, hallelujah, say a sweet resting place. Oh, and he has, Jesus has made me glad. Oh, that's why I say now, God. God has, yes, he has, smiled on me, oh, and he has set 
me free. Oh, I know that God, my God has, hey, yes, he has, oh, and he's been, yes, he has, I said, he's been, through coronavirus now, he's been, through this great pandemic, he's been, he made a way out of no way, hallelujah, he kept the roof over my head, yeah, he healed my body, yeah, I said, God has been good to me, oh, I said, God has been good to me, oh, he's been good to me, hey, he touched my family, yeah, he made a way, yes, he did, Hallelujah. He put food on the table. Oh, he put a roof over my head. He's been said, he's been good. Yeah, he's been good to me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You've been good to me, Jesus. You've been good to me, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory. God, I feel good, church. Let's stand on our feet. We better get Brother Gene out here quick and let him preach. Oh, my, I feel the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because... He lives, oh, all fear is gone, because I know, oh, He holds my future, and life is worth the living oh just because he lives come on everybody sing with all your heart because he lives oh because he lives yes i can face tomorrow alive in your heart? Amen. As they continue to play that soft, delicious by our hearts, Heavenly Father, we count it a privilege that we could gather together and assemble around your word. I'm reminded in your scripture where the Bible says, where the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Father, we come under expectation this afternoon that you would come and minister to each and every need. Father, you know the desires of the hearts of your people. And dear Lord, I pray, Father, that you would just honor their requests. May you meet those needs, exceed ex expectation. May you continue to put a, a protection round about them. 
May you be with them, dear Lord. And Father, I pray that you would just remove any distractions from their lives that would prevent them from giving you their best, from worshiping you and glorifying you. And Father, as we turn our attention to the preaching of the word, Father, even I myself am under expectation. I yield myself as a servant unto you, dear Lord, a tool that you can use, that you can be a blessing to your people, dear God. Speak to us now, for we'll be careful to give you the praise and glory that you alone are worthy of. And the bride says, amen. God bless you, saints. Amen. Certainly good to be in the house of the Lord. If you wouldn't mind grabbing your Bibles, turn with me to Exodus chapter 17. Bring your greetings from, from my family. Um, children doing very well by God's grace. It's amazing um, how fast eight months go. It's, it's really amazing. And um, I was telling Brother Jack earlier that um, one of the benefits of being able to work from home, in, as in, um, in my case, um, is just seeing kind of that growth and that development and, um, you know, from them being an infant to where they're really, you know, you, you could keep them in one spot and they stay in one spot. Now you look away in just a split moment and they're not in that same spot. So, and they're just kind of moving around and their personalities are beginning to come through and it's just, it's just uh, remarkable. And as I was saying previously, you know, there, you know, there's that scripture in Isaiah where the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And um, my wife and I, we've patiently waited for these little blessings and to know that they've now come into our lives. There's that renewed strength that we, we we're experiencing. And um, it's just... Uh, joy unspeakable and um like i was just i I previously mentioned that um you know it's one thing when you pray about something and the next day you get it you know but when you've waited for a while you know that appreciation you know um just you know you're you're much you're you're delicate in how you handle the blessings of god um because you know it was through a lot of you know long nights of prayer a lot of toils a lot of tears and and so we're just we're just uh um, appreciative of uh, the blessings of God. And we appreciate your prayers because many of you have been on the journey with us and, um, and just to be here, um, it's just uh, really awesome. So we, um, given the circumstance, we couldn't bring them, I couldn't come down with them, but um, I trust there'll be other opportunities for me to come down with them. So, but they nonetheless, they send their greetings and um, I do have some pictures after church, so, so in case anybody's interested. It, it's funny because I never thought I'd be kind of that father. <laughs> I never thought I'd be that father. It, it, it boggled my mind when, I'm like, you got a lot of pictures of your kids. You know, the first couple of hours, my kids, were, I was just like, you know, constantly just take. So I, I got tons of pictures. You know, it's, 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 it, it changes you, you know, and it's a... <laughs> It's a good feeling, so we just we just thank God for that, amen. amen. All right, well, praise the Lord. Turn with me to you're you're there already. So Exodus uh, chapter 17. We'll have one. We'll read one verse, and then we'll go from there, and then um and we'll just kind of trust the Lord in all of this. So Exodus 17 verse 8, and it reads, <clears throat> Then came Amalek, and fought with Israel in Rephidim. We we'll read it again. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. Amen. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of the word. You may be seated. Um, I'll also try to draw, I'll also read this last, um, the last two verses of the same chapter in Exodus 17, the last two verses. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi, which, uh, for he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek, from generation to generation. So, so we're, we're, by God's grace, going to try to link these together. But I wanted to kind of set the stage because it just seems um, just out of nowhere where the scripture is, is being called out. Then came Amalek um, and fought Israel. So that, that, that word then is a transitional word, right? So something occurred, then this happened, right? So then Amalek came. So we'll come back to that thought. Um, we'll come back to that thought as we kind of build on this. But I want to set the stage of where Israel is at in their journey. So Israel had uh, been in Egypt for quite some time. And God um, had heard the cry of Israel. 
and um, had seen, like I was saying before, their affliction and has heard their cry and know of their sorrows. Right. And so God was acquainted with the suffrage of his people. Yes. And, um, and, 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 and so he looked to Moses um, to, uh, to utilize him as a vessel to go down towards Egypt and bring his people out. And so, um, as the story would go, um, you know, Moses, uh, 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 you know, yielded himself as a vessel to go and invade Egypt. As the prophet would uh, explain it, it was a one-man invasion. Now, let me kind of help kind of set the stage for you. Th th this is a one-man invasion with his wife and kids. And they're, they're invading one of the most powerful nation yes. on the earth at that time. But prior to that, Moses had just come into contact with God. So nothing could stand in God's way. So if you happen to be a bystander, as you were watching Moses, you know, and his wife and his child on a donkey, and they're going back to Egypt. Well, he left. He left Egypt. He just came from Egypt, and now he's going back to Egypt. Moses, where are you going? I'm going to invade Egypt. All right. What, what else can you really say? So Moses was going down to Egypt following God's strict order because he knew that God was in control of this. Because, you know, let me just kind of drop this. I remember Jesus said, I, you know, he says, I, he says, I, I'll see you on the other side. Uh -huh. So no matter what the storm did or what, no matter what came through, no matter how bad the storm was, Jesus said, I'll see you on the other side. Uh, so I don't care about the storms of life. He made a promise to me, and I'm holding on to that promise. If he says, I'll see you on the other side, then that tells me I made it to the other side. So here was Moses going down to Egypt, and God was already working on the scene because Moses, uh, Pharaoh's heart hardened against what Moses was trying to do, and God was trying to prove his people because the prophet says that Pharaoh was actually a, a tender-hearted man, and so he was probably in a position where he was willing to let the children of Israel just go, but, you know, situation occurred in which God hardened his heart and so he held the children of Israel back and there were many plagues that you know that plagued the nation yeah. and you know it's interesting because <laughs> you know sometimes you just kind of you, you don't know where people's minds are at uh -huh. because you know when Moses went down there he you know he he had his stick in his hand and you know he he says you know uh he threw his stick down and and the and and, and the people weren't impressed because when the stick turned into serpents, they, they weren't impressed. And so when, and when, when Janice and Jebrins, they came, they, they threw their stick down too. And their stick turned into serpents as well. So Moses' stick swallowed them up. So they're saying, look, the same power you have, we have. I'm like, all right. And so God would bring a plague in Egypt. Bring a plague in Egypt would turn the water there into blood, right. <laughs> would bring frogs in the nation. Yeah. Right. Janice and Jambrins did the same thing. Yes. They turned water into blood. Uh -huh. It's in the scripture. Yes. To show that they could do that too. Right. Their people's already suffering. And yet they want to do the same thing. To show <laughs> you're not any better right. at the expense of their own people. Right. So you had plague after plague, God's punishing the nation, and the, the, the folks on the opposite side saying, look, that, that's, 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 just a, that's just a fancy magic trick. We could do the same thing. You could bring frogs, we bring frogs too. It, it doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> you turn water into blood, we could do the same thing too. We'll do it. Rather than gleaning what the lessons is from God, they want to show that, hey, we could, we could make bad happen too. So 
things kind of build up a little bit. And finally, it gets to the point where um, the death angel was getting ready to make its rounds. Uh-huh. And I'm kind of setting the stage to yeah. how we got here. So bear yeah. with me. Amen. And as the death angel was making this round, Moses told the children of Israel, put a blood on the post and lentil. Yep. And when the death angel see that blood, he says, I will pass over you. Right. So it didn't matter how good of a preacher you were. It didn't matter how good of a singer you were. It didn't matter all all that you knew. It didn't matter if you knew Moses or not know Moses. It didn't matter if you knew Aaron or didn't know Aaron. All you knew was that I had to put the blood on the post and lentil. Because the death angel is going to make its way around the country, and it's not going to discriminate. When I see the blood... I will pass over you. So I know back then, believers, I don't know, if I was back then, I would have taken that really seriously. I would have made sure that the blood was visible in my door. I wouldn't have left any room for guessing. I don't want a bunch of death angels congregating someone saying, I wonder if that's a mistake. I want it so that we're a mile away. You can see that the blood's been applied. I'll be painting my door so red. Son, go back. Can you see it? I can see it. Go back a little bit further. Can you see it? I can see it. Go back some more. I want to make sure that there's no doubt that you know that there's a son of God. There's a family of God in which the token is applied. Then the nation was brought to its knees when the death angel made its way throughout the country. Can you just imagine what an experience it must have been like for the children of Israel cradling their kids behind closed doors and then the blood, the token being applied and to hear the cries of those around you, the agony and the pain. They woke up the next day and Pharaoh had enough because even his own son was taken. And he says, y'all got to go. So Israel was coming out of Egypt. But here's the thing. Even though you come out of the world, it doesn't mean that the world would not try to influence you. And so as Egypt, as Israel left Egypt, Pharaoh probably thought about it, contemplated, and he started to choose some chariots to go after Israel. And as they went after Israel, can you just imagine this? I want, you, uh, I want to paint this picture. You had the, the world's most powerful military with their, with their elite soldiers. Yeah. Chasing after a group of believers. What were they afraid of? They have witnessed the power of God. And they gathered, not not just uh, foot soldiers, but chariots. I mean, that's kind of like, that's 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 your top military, you know, uh, 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 equipment that you use to go to battle, to go to war. And they were going to do serious damage. And so they were in hot pursuit after the children of Israel. And um, as they were pursuing after them, the children of Israel realized that they were in hot pursuit. So they left Egypt. They left the world. But the influence of the world is not following them. To bring them back into Egypt. That's the reason why a lot of young Christians, when they first come in, they're so excited, but they're still struggling with the influence of the world. Because Satan says, no, I've invested too much to make you what you are. And now you're leaving me, I'm not going to make it that easy on you. But if you're an elect of God, if you're chosen of God, and God's called you to where you are now, there's not a thing the devil can do that God can't undo. (laughs) 
So Israel is now being chased. Two million people is now being chased by the Egyptians. And they're in hot pursuit after them. Chariots of horses. It was, the Bible says in, he took 600 chosen chariots. In chapter 14, in Exodus, then he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. Uh-huh. Chosen chariots. Right. He chose, like one brother says, you know, Satan chooses certain demons to go after you. Wow. Your, your fight is different than my fight. Your devil is different than my devil. That's the reason why I can never be in a position to criticize anyone. Because what you may have trouble overcoming might be different than what I'm having trouble overcoming. Because the devil knows exactly how to kind of your weak spots. So he chooses 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were so afraid, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Now think about the situation that they're in. The children of Israel had just left Egypt. And now before them is the Red Sea. Uh How are you going to cross two million people over the Red Sea? Behind them is the Egyptian. So God's saying, you can't go back. You have no choice but to go forward. But there's a dilemma in front of you. So now what are you going to do? And you can't stand still. The Egyptians behind them, the Red Seas before them, they can't go back and they, they, they don't know how they're going to handle what's in front of them. What a predicament. When I, when, when I first got converted, I was, in a, I was in a pickle. I know I couldn't go back. I didn't know what, I didn't know what laid, ahead, uh, uh, laid ahead of me. There was a lot of uncertainty. But the one thing I knew I trusted God. Because the same God that brought me out is the same God that could bring me in. God doesn't go through all the trouble to bring you out and just to leave you by yourself. And so the Bible goes on and says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes it's not for you to come up with a solution. Don't try to figure it out. Sometimes you just got to reach a point in your life and say, Lord, I'm going to stand still and wait for you to give me an answer to my prayers. What am I supposed to do? I'm in a perplexed situation. I'm in a, in a stage of confusion. And the thing about our God, he is not the author of confusion. God is a God of order. And no matter how complicated the situation is, there's definitely a way out of it. And God told Moses, we're going to press forward. There's a body of water in front of us. He says, we're going to move forward. No matter what lays before you, the circumstances of life, no matter what you're coming across, whether it's family situation, job situation, whatever you're mentally going through, spiritually going through, economically going through, you're going to press forward. I'd rather deal with the uncertainty that lays ahead of me than the devil that's behind me. Because the Bible says, be ye certain of God. 
Every step that I take, I'm taking it in faith. I left Egypt. There's nothing for me there. Now, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Why cry unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. Now, they came across the Red Sea. And the Bible says this, And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, because there was an angel that was before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. I've been in situations before, brother, where I thought my boys had my back. And I found that I was the only one standing by myself. Yeah, I see you there at 2 o'clock. I showed up. I was the only one there. I figured they were late. They never showed up. But let me tell you something. This scripture is the epitome that you never stand by yourself. And that God has your back. That's the reason why I'm not worried about my past. I'm only, only focused on what lays ahead of me. He said, Brother Gene, you did this, you said this, and you acted this way. That was all in the past. It's underneath the blood. If God can't see it, then I can't. So I press forward because he has my back. And that's the only thing that that's the only thing that God's requiring that you press forward. No matter the adversity, you press forward. No matter the uncertainty, you press forward. No matter if you have the answers or not, you press forward. No matter what the challenge is, you press forward. You keep pressing forward. Keep pressing forward. And God says there was a strong east wind that came overnight and that parted the, the, the Red Sea and created a wall. Can you just, I just, sometimes I visualize myself there to really have meaning to what I'm reading. This massive sea, this wall that's built between, like a wall of water that's built and a clear passage to cut through for two million people. And because the cloud and the pillar of fire was behind them, the Egyptian couldn't make out what was going on. And God is, and Moses is standing there leading the people and every elect, every two million, every one was accounted for. And those walls of judgment held back until every elect made it through. You can't get there until I get there. You can shout the victory once you get to the other side, but you got to wait for me. Because I'm still part of the family. We're all in this together. Like I was telling the church previously, I said, look, when God took a family portrait, I was right there. I could show you. They'll get my face right there. You know how when you, tell, when you try to take a family portrait and there's a lot of people, you want to make sure that your face is sewn. So you can say, yeah, that, that's me right there. I'm part of that family. I'm part of the great family of God. You're part of that family. So God is taking inventory. That's what the book of numbers are. God is taking inventory, and I've been accounted for. You've been accounted for. Before you were born, God says, I've already accounted for you. And the way, that, the way that been, that's been paved for the elect seed of God is only for the elect. So the, so the Egyptians thought they were just, you know, they're like, yeah, we could cut through this too. So all, all of the Israelites, they made it through. And um, the Egyptians tried to cut through. They missed a swimming practice. And so, 
you know, they, they thought they'd be okay. Here they are walking through this. And the water come crashing in with such force. How dare they go down the path that's been ordained for God's elect. That path is for you. Amen. Brother Bram says, if the, 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 if the, he says, the only way the devil could actually get to you, he has to go, he has to be baptized, sealed, go through the whole process, and at which point he says, you could call him brother. But until then, that path is only reserved for God's elect. So the children of Israel, they made it through the other side. And in chapter 15, verse 1, they sang Moses, then sang Moses, the children of Israel, this song unto the Lord. And they spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and, the right, and his riders he hath thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he's become my salvation. They start having a jubilee. Let me tell you, when you've gone through a trial, and you come through a Sunday service, and what a week it's been. And no one knows what you've gone through. And you're singing and you're shouting. You're not impressing the people around you. You're giving God the glory because only you know the week that you've gone through. You wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for God who carried you through. So when I go to church, I have no one to impress. No one to show. But to say, Lord, I'm only here because of your grace. When I lift up my hands and I close my eyes, I'm not looking to impress people. I may not look the best when I'm worshiping, but I'm giving God the best in my worship. Because I know what my week has been like. I know the conversations I've been a part of. I know the trials. I know the strife. I know the challenges. And for me to have made it through that week, it's only by God's grace alone. Moses understood that. His sister Miriam, in verse 20, Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. And Miriam answered them, Sing ye to the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. Gloriously, his, the horse and his riders, hath he triumphed, uh, has he thrown into the sea. They're just, man, what, what church services it must have been. They took out the tambourine. They started beating the tambourine. They started singing. They started shouting. They could care less who saw, who didn't see, who, who was talking. Because the people that are talking, they're the ones that should be singing and worshiping too. And here's the thing. While all this jubilee was happening, the devil was stewing up. He was mad. What a victory the church of God just came out of. And in the middle of the worship, literally in the same verse, down in the same chapter, in the same chapter, Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea and they went out into the wilderness of Shur and they went there three days in the wilderness and found no water. So they just come out of their highs. Woo, God is good. God is great. Praise the Lord. The devil comes around, smack you in your face. You, you, gotta, you, you, you always got to be on guard. I say, Lord, thank you for such a wonderful church service. I need you on Monday morning. The devil don't like Sunday services. He doesn't like it when you beat him over the head. He doesn't like it when you slap him around. Oh, he's waiting for that opportunity. And no sooner when they came out of this high point, this edification, they're so excited, they're so victorious. The Bible says in verse 23, And when they came to Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called was Mara. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Now, I, I can't... I have questions, so I, the Lord just has to bear with me because when I get over there, I got tons of questions. 
But the people saw all these things happen. And you're talking about the little drink of water, and now you want to have an uproar? God just crushed your enemy with a sea of water. And you just want a little thirst, and now you want to put it out on the prophet. So this is important. And so God told, tells Moses, there's a tree, cut it down, cast it into the water, and it becomes sweet. And that happens. In the interest of time, the people gets hungry. God provides quail for them. The people gets hungry. God provides uh, manna for them. He's taking care of his people. And now in chapter 17. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys, according to the commandments of the Lord, and pitched in Rephidim. And there were no water, and there were no there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore the people did shide with Moses and say, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, why chide ye with me? Why do ye tempt the Lord? Come on. So they just came out of Egypt. They felt the sense of victory. Then they get into a position where they become thirsty. God blesses them and gives them uh, water. They get hungry, God feeds them. And so you find this internal battle that's occurring within the church. So things are beginning to kind of stew a little bit. The devil's a strategist. He don't get you today, he'll get you tomorrow. He don't get you this week, he'll look at for you next week. But he's always studying. That's the reason why we got to find ourselves protected by God's words. Shielded. It got to be much more than just words, saint. You got to live and breathe by this word. When you get up in the morning, you, you don't know what your day is going to look like, but you got to start your day with Jesus Christ. Amen. Every waking morning, I start my, my day with a prayer. Amen. I start my day with a verse. That's what Brother Gene does. All right. I know some people, for my health reasons, they start their day with the daily vitamins. That's fine. That's what you're supposed to do. That's healthy for you. But I need my spiritual vitamin. Because I don't know what the devil's going to throw at me. But whatever he throws at me, I got to know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. It's no joke out there, saints. The devil is battling for your soul. So I'm taking God seriously. I'm taking services seriously. When I come to church, I say, Lord, I need something from you. I want to receive something from you. I want you to talk to me. I want you to speak directly to my heart. Because I know this is a serious affair. And so you have this battle that's brewing. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses, and they went back. He says, what are you tempting the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, wherefore is this that Joshua that the, wherefore is this that has that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt? The audacity to compare Egypt and the taskmasters and what they came from to this. Is this what the message is about? Oh my. My God. <laughs> Don't blame the message for some earthly demons that you're still working through. Don't blame God's words for little weaknesses in your life that you got to come overcome. You can't compare this message to the things of the world. To kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst. And Moses cried unto the Lord and said, What shall I do with these people? For they be almost ready to stone me. Things got pretty serious. I mean, there was internal conflict. People were thirsty, so the church was in a weak state. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee of the elders, and thy rod words, thou smotest the river, take in thy hand and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock and horb, 
And thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come out of it water, water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah, because of the chiding of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Eyewitnesses to all the miracles of God. And God says, all right, Moses, this is what I want you to do. We're going to give the people water. And while all this is happening, this internal conflict and the weakness of where the people's at, we finally come to verse 8. Then came Amalek and fought Israel and Rephidim. Why? The church was now in a weak and vulnerable state. So Amalek says, this is an opportunity for us to take advantage of this situation. It's in that weak moment. Brother Ben puts it this way in the church ages. He says, in, he says and I quote, in that unguarded moment, Satan planted his seed of complete ruination. In that unguarded moment. Because as long as we're fighting ourselves... Then the devil could sneak in. Not only just amongst the church, amongst families. It's so important that we build a standard. That we fortify ourselves behind God's words. So Amalek comes in. And here's the thing. This was an unprovoked attack. Just because of who they were. Just because of who you are, the devil already don't like you. People look at you and it's like, I don't like the way she smiles. I don't like the way she's always in a good mood. He seems to be always positive. Well, how else do you expect me to be? I know what God has done in my life. I know what he's brought me through. I know what I had to overcome. I know what I went through. Hallelujah. And so I'm not, your, my happiness is not depending upon your judgment or opinion. Right. It's what God says about me. Hallelujah. Unprovoked. And so you find that in verse 9, And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go fight with Amalek. The prophet couldn't choose men. But Joshua, being the type of the Holy Spirit, chose those men to go to battle. So he chooses a group of people to go to battle. Let me tell you, when you go to war, you're going forward. God tells you, I have not given you the spirit of fear so that way you could fear again. So you find, he says, I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So the battle set. The devil thought, you know what? In this weak state, I'll take advantage of him. Only you know when your moments of weakness occurs. And if you don't have an altar, not in this building, but I'm talking about in your house. I'm somebody in your job. Yes. I'm somebody in your car. Right. When you're by yourself, yes. how can you actually stand if you don't have an altar? Oh, oh. We're living in a time where it's going to become more and more apparent who you are, what you believe, yes. what you stand for. Yes. There's no hiding under a tree. There's no hiding in the masses. And I, for, if I'm with you, if I, if I were you, I, I got to be prepared to make a declaration. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. So Amalek came and fought with Israel. 
with the intent to kill them, to destroy them. The battle is different for you and I because we're not talking about something physical as much as it is spiritual. People could go to church just to get their religious fix on. What did you do this weekend? I went to church. And that's not a badge of honor. Living that life and going to church is two different things. And Moses said unto Joshua, choose us out men and go out fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Ur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. In every situation, I am looking to enter that situation with uplifting hands. I look silly in the car by myself doing this. But I, but I don't care. I got demons I got to fight. And I'm not waiting just to get to church. For the preacher to preach a good message for me to have a winning victory when I have 66 books in the Bible that I could read myself as well and receive the same victory. I could be in my office with my hands up. I'm in my house walking around giving the Lord the victory. It might be foolishness to the world. But to me, it's everything. Hallelujah. It's very symbolic. I'm learning this more and more. When my baby wants me to pick him up, they throw their hands up. You want daddy to pick you up? (laughs) You didn't have to say much. (laughs) That gesture, I as a father know exactly what I need to do. When you throw your hands up and say, Lord, I don't have the words. He already knows what to do. He knows how to lift you up out of the situation that you're in. Lord, here's my hands. Lift me up to God. Raise me out of the situation that I'm in. He can lift you up. He has the strength. He has the means. He has the will. And not only that, but he wants to lift you up. And as long as Moses had his hands up, there was victory in the camp. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it, but God is still victorious. There's a scripture, and you probably know better than I do, soldier, but where there was a battle, and it happened at the mountaintop, at the top of the mountain, and the children of Israel was victorious. And people was like, ah, oh, it's because they were at the top of the mountain. And that's the reason why. And God says, let's bring the battle to the valley. The same God that's on the mountaintop is the same God that can meet you in the valley. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thy rod and thy staff that comfort me. He's just as much God in the mountaintop as he is God in the valley. When I'm in my lowest point in my life, I still declare him to be God. The Hebrew children understood that. The king says, I'm going to throw you into the fiery furnace. And they says, you know what, king? You can throw us into the fiery furnace and we're going to believe God. But even if he doesn't come on the scene... They said, we still will not bow down to the image. Brother Ben says, I could could preach healing today and a thousand people die tomorrow. He says, I'll still preach healing tomorrow. And it came to pass when Moses 
held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. He was observing that. And Moses' hands were heavy. Now, you try to keep your hands up like this for a while. <laughs> That's exactly right. I remember when I was uh, in college, uh, there was this speaker that was talking to us, this motivational speaker. This was part of our graduation. And uh, if I remember correctly, he was trying to see who could stay like this the longest. And uh, so we all kind of stood in that position. And uh, next thing you know, we started, started doing exercise because he's trying to ease it up. And I'm right here, and it was really most of the guys were kind of sitting here because we could shoulder this by ourselves. Saw a couple of the ladies, they started locking arms. And I'm right here, my, my arm's halfway down. He's like, ah! And I'm watching this. And I'm like, are they allowed to do this? And he's like, so next thing you know, I'm like, hey, come on over here, man. So I locked arms with this guy, locked on with this person. Next thing you know, you're like, you felt so relieved. And then a little circle started to form. We started supporting one another. He had this, uh, this football player. He was kind of by himself. He wanted to prove a point. Meanwhile, I'm all relaxed. I'm like, man, come on, man. You could join us, man. You don't need to be like staying like that. I mean, you could just, you could join us. He was adamant. The circle was almost done. It was just, it was just him. I like, you really want to do this? He persisted. He persisted. But like you say, gravity. <laughs> Gravity's no joke. That's right. He was turning. He was just turning red, and he was just kind of. He was shaking. I like, bro. You, I mean, your girl's right here too, man. You could just, you could join us. I mean, it's, it's okay. And he reluctantly. When he locked arms, he was so relieved. Amen. The lesson that we learned is like, we all in this together. As stubborn as that person wanted to be, be patient. Because they're still part of the group. Wait on them, pray for them, encourage them, be there with them. Because you didn't know at one time, you stood by yourself. But then when you started to learn that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness, that I need my brother as much as he needs me, then it changes the game. And Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat there on an Aaron and Ur stayed up his hands. The one on one side and the other on the other side. And the hands were steady until the going down of the sun. That is very symbolic because you just think for that moment it's a dual meaning. He kept his hands up until the setting of the sun. So this bride will continue to have victory throughout the ages until the setting of the sun. Your victory is not you. It's God's victory. It's God's leadership. It's God's ability to work a miracle in your life. And when Joshua saw that, they rallied behind. And the Bible says, And Joshua discomfited Amalek and, and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book. We're reading it. That's right. And rehearse it. In the years of Joshua, because when Moses goes, Joshua's going to need to pick this up. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Let me go off a quick side note. The reason why it's so important to read this book, write it for a memorial. The Bible says there arose a Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. 
There arose a Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. The reason why is because before Joseph uh, had died, he was the right hand of Pharaoh. And he was a blessing to his brothers because they're now are under his kind of domain, if you will, and they're reaping the benefits. And the Egyptian had a ton of respect for Joseph. And so as they kind of, as they interacted, they kept on talking about Joseph. So when Joseph died, they kept on talking about him. A wave of generation rose up, and perhaps the name of Joseph was discussed less, but they still knew enough to keep their respect. So another group of generation rose up, both the Egyptians and the Jews, and the conversation about Joseph becomes less. And so apparently after generation after generation, they stopped talking about Joseph. And a Pharaoh rose up amongst them who knew not Joseph. They kept from keeping the name of Joseph alive. So that's the reason why it's important to teach your kids about Jesus Christ. To teach your kids about the stories in the scripture. To teach your kids about these experiences. So that way they can teach their kids and their kids and their kids. So that way as long as the Lord tarries, the name of Jehovah always remains in the lips of your children. Keeping the name of Jesus alive. They may not know nothing about this Bible. They have no idea that there's an empty tomb. But the only recollection that they have about Jesus is the way you and I live our lives. And what testimony you bring forward. So the Bible says, rehearse it. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner. The Lord is my banner. I'm going to rally behind the name of Jehovah because he goes into battle for me. I'm going to stand with God. I'm not ashamed of this gospel. I am called by God. I am chosen. I'm elected. You're chosen, you're called, you're elected, you're predestinated. Amen. These are things that the scriptures talks about you in your family. And in closing, the Bible says, For he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Your enemies become God's enemies. Generations after generation, you pass on the name of Jesus Christ and God's going to continue to watch over your generation and continue to make war with the devil. The devil has no place in your home. No place with your family. No place in this church. No place in your job. No place in your car. No matter where you go, the devil has no grounds. No place he could go. Because you're a child of God. Everywhere the soles of your feet stand, you have a right to that place. And the devil has no place there. You should be able to go back to your house and say boldly, Satan, I rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I command you to leave my house. Get rid of that timid spirit and say, Satan, you know, I just said it'd be really nice if you could leave here. He has no right to your family. He has no right to your health. He has no right to your job. You got to lay claim. Say, say, let me tell you something. If you won't speak the word, I'm going to speak it. Every promise in the book is mine. Don't let the devil rob you of your blessings. You're a child of God. If Bill Gates... Cut you a check, put your name on it, and left it blank and says, write the amount you want. I ain't going to write $100. 
I'm telling you that right now. Y'all laughing because you know you wouldn't write $100. There's not enough zeros. And I'm gonna tell you, greater, is, greater than Bill Gates is here this afternoon has given you a blank check and said, write what you will. You ought to be riding like crazy. Lord, I want my health. Lord, I need my finances. Lord, I need my job. I need my family. I need my son. I need my daughter. Write what you will. Let's all stand to our feet. He's given you the victory. Don't walk around like you're defeated. Don't walk around with your head hung down low. You're a child of God. I know who my daddy is. When the devil comes before me, I said, devil, you know who my dad is? His name starts with Jesus. His last name is Christ. And I'm his son. What do you got to say to me? You got to have confidence in who you are, where you came from, where are you going? Every time the devil opens his mouth, Brother Jack, I know he's lying. Yes. Every time he whispers something, you know he's lying. When he says, you ain't going to make it, you say, well, thank you, devil. That just tells me I've already made it. When he looks at you and says, yo, your back is all messed up. Well, thank you, devil. You just told me, God just healed my back. When he tells you your family's gone, well, thank you, devil. That just tells me that God is bringing my family back together again. When he tells you you shouldn't be sitting in this church, oh, I praise the Lord. This is exactly the place I should be. Every time he opens up his mouth, it's the opposite. We don't need to run anymore. We don't need to hide anymore. We know who we are. There's royalty that flows through this veins. Speak the word. Claim what God has given you. Don't let the devil rob you of the blessings that God has given unto you. You hold on to everything. You hold on to every promise. You're a child of the king. You were born into royalty. Amen. Know who you are. Y'all know the story about that one slave? Y'all yeah. know it? Yeah. Why is he so different? Yeah. Why does he act different? Why does he talk different? Yeah. Well, in his homeland, his dad was a king. Yeah. Yeah. And he might be in foreign territory, but he still conducts himself like a son of a king. When I interact with people, I want to know that they're talking to the son of a king. You believe that? Let's bow our hearts. Father, I feel like I struggle sometimes just to find the right words to express what you mean to us. Man in his finite wisdom, dear Lord, will always come short to find the words that he could truly express. And Father, another way that we could demonstrate our love and our appreciation for you is by how we worship you, how we live our lives for you. Father, we just commit ourselves to you. Your word is so precious and so pure. Your word is so true and so right. Keep our hands up, Lord. Help us to rave our hands in victory. For we know the devil is defeated. He's plowed down beneath our feet. No more does he have claims to our loved ones, to our household. We're taking back everything he's taken from us. I lay claims to my healing. Despite how I may feel, I lay claims to my healing. I lay claims to 
my family. No matter how disarrayed things may be at times, I lay claims to my family. Lay claims to my finances. I don't know how I'm going to pay the next bill, but I'm trusting you, Lord, and I'm laying claims to that. You know all of our needs. You know all of our situations. We're encouraged, Lord, to know that the uncertainty that lays before us, you say in your word, be ye certain of God, and that we are. We're, we're, we're trusting you. We're trusting you for Monday, the rest of the week, the month, the year, whatever lays before us to God. As you made a way for the children of Israel to cut through the Red Sea, you have the ability to do the same thing with whatever obstacles that lays before us that you're able to allow us to move forward and pave a way for us. Bless every soul that's here to God. Meet every need and seed every expectation. Bless this little group here. Bless our precious pastor, our, our, our brother, Brother Jack Duff, as he continues to labor in the ministry and providing bread for your people. May you give him courage and strength. Bless everyone that's here, the Lord, every family. May your Holy Spirit just bring them together, the Lord, solidifying this group, strengthening this group, keep them out of harm's way. For even after this, this afternoon's victory, Satan's looking for an opportunity. I pray, the Lord, that you just guard your people and keep them fortified behind your word. Watch over them. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. God bless you, saints. Come on, 
let's sing it one more time. Jehovah is your name. Say Jehovah is your name. Ah, Jehovah is your name. Hallelujah. Ah, Jehovah is your name. Ah, Jehovah is your name. Mighty warrior, mighty warrior, great in battle. Jehovah. One more time, lift it up. Hey, mighty warrior, hey, you are mighty warrior. You are great, great in that Jehovah. Yes, he's a mighty warrior, say. church. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. How we thank God for our precious brother Gene just laboring, amen, to bring the gospel to us and uh, how uh, fitting uh, both sermons, amen, were to just strengthen the church and encourage the church of looking at how he connected, amen, and the first sermon to uh, how brother Troy had kind of shared last week about, you know, what, what mountain, amen, is standing in our way, and then he goes and he starts talking about Jehovah Nisi, and that connected to Brother Kwaku, <laughs> and those seven redemptive names, amen, just, just, God just coming this, the way he orchestrates things, he proves that he is in the midst of his people, and how grateful we are just to hear the voice of the Lord, amen, on today. Uh, we will and prepare to dismiss. We'll have a word of prayer. Amen. Again, we want to thank God for uh, Sister Blanc and Sister Tabitha being with us. Amen. Today, God bless you. Amen. It's so good to have you in fellowship with us. Amen. Let's um, just bow, amen, in a word of prayer uh, as we prepare to dismiss. God, we thank you for the precious word that has been presented to us. God, as we, we've heard Many times you'll do something in our lives, a mighty deliverance, like you delivered the children of Israel from Egypt. But God, Egypt was following them. God, maybe some of us have felt the effects of Egypt following us, but God, when you make a way, when you deliver, you truly deliver. Scripture says, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. So we thank you already in advance for every victory uh, over her trial and help us to learn from what we heard here today. God, after great victories, it's not a time to murmur and complain and, and criticize and, and Lord, and, and just start, uh, Lord, just get a bitter spirit. But Father, we got to remain united. We got to remain united to you and united one to another. Lord, I just pray that as brothers and sisters will continue to spiritually lock arms, amen, uh, lean on each other's weight, oh God, and realize we can make it together. Lord, I, I trust, Lord, that we've heard what your spirit was trying to speak to us today. I pray, God, that we would apply what we have heard and may you use it for your glory here in this place. We pray a special blessing upon Brother Gene and his wife and his and his children, oh God, uh, Caleb and Naomi, uh, just be with them, God, and strengthen them. And 
Lord, I pray that you would keep them during this time. Bless the saints as they prepare to leave this place, but not your presence. Bless those that have joined us online. Ask that you would just continue to minister to them right where they are, God. Get the glory, get the honor, and get the praise out of all that we do, God. Keep us till we're able to meet one another again. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give him another hand of praise because he alone deserves it. Bless the name of Jesus. Amen. You can be seated in his presence. We want to say to those that are joining us online, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us on today. And we trust that you have been blessed, amen, by the word of the Lord and by the presence of God. And trust that you will join us again, amen, in the week to come. We'll be back in service on Wednesday night for our Wednesday night teaching. And and, and I tell you, even uh, what uh, Brother Gene was talking about this morning, going to connect right in on Wednesday night. So uh, I just believe God's, God's in control. So God bless you until we meet again.